Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is indeed my pleasure to be here in this historic city uh, and a city which has determined the fortunes of uh, long product players for a long, long time. I hope it stays that way and the fortunes get better. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Steel Orbis and Eripas for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my presentation will basically cover two parts. One is the GCC steel market outlook. Uh, and the second part is uh, what we are doing at Jindal Shadid uh, towards the sustainable growth. And of course, we cannot have a conference today without talking about decarbonization and being green. So I will talk a bit about what we are doing to stay green and relevant, because I believe being green is not just nice to have anymore. It is now a need to have, and it's going to become more and more important factor as we go along. Um, so, uh, after the not so pleasant uh, uh, outlook from our colleagues from Spain and also from Turkey, I believe uh, uh, GCC market is slightly better, uh, I won't say booming, but slightly better relative to other parts of the world, maybe with the exception of India, which of course is seeing a relatively strong growth. And there are, uh, we expect that there would be about a 6.2% growth in the next eight years to 2030. Uh, and driven, and the key drivers mainly are, of course, the infrastructure development, uh, the biggest of which is, of course, the NEOM in Saudi Arabia. It's still to take off really in terms of steel consumption but I believe it's something that's going to happen very soon. Uh, especially some of the projects are due for uh, completion by 2027, being the site for some of the uh, Asian games, Asian winter games. Uh, of course, the Etihad Rail, the metro expansion in the cities, uh, and the infrastructure development uh, should contribute to steel uh, development. Uh, rising population is, of course, a, uh, and urbanization in many of the cities is driving the demand. But the most important driver is, uh, I think, the, the drive by the respective governments to move away from an oil-based to a manufacturing-based economy, and all of them in their 2040 mission statement or a 2050 mission statement or the Saudi Vision 2030 all talk about moving away from oil to a manufacturing or a non-oil-led economy. Uh, so this is a big transformation in the region, uh, considering that some, in some of the economies, almost 80% or 90% uh, revenues are dependent on oil. Uh, the other opportunities, of course, uh, most of the GCC uh, countries have a long coastline and easy access to ports, which is helping, of course, export uh, export drive, uh, availability of gas, very, very important factor now, particularly for the steel industry. And we be we begin to see uh, DRI, EF becoming very critical uh, in the steel making process. Uh, driven by the D gas availability is also the, uh, the drive by the governments to invest in renewable energy and drive towards hydrogen economy. Uh, and I believe uh, the Middle East or GCC will play a significant role in being hydrogen economy in the, ne in the next decade. Uh, of course, uh, not all is rosy when you talk about GCC. Of course, the raw material, particularly metallics, are a significant factor in terms of steel development in the GCC. The other big factor is the political size and the limited market size in many of these. So most of them would have to depend on exports. Uh, particularly if we talk about the new projects that have been spoken about, particularly on the flat product side. Uh, the other factor, of course, is the political situation. But having said that, I believe we are at the cusp. We are beginning to see some early signs of stability, uh, particularly with respect to maybe Iran, with respect to Yemen. And we hope that we begin to see more development uh, and peace uh, in the region. Moving to the next, in terms of numbers, we currently estimate, uh, 2022 steel demand estimate overall is expected to be about 23 million in GCC, uh, of which long product demand is about 14 million. Uh, we expect both of it to grow uh, in the, uh, as I mentioned, up to the 38 million. Of course, I believe the flat product growth may be higher than the long product growth, and the nature of the growth could be different in both. Um, uh, this uh, talks about this slide talks about the 
the targeted growth, obviously you see big growth projects announced in Saudi Arabia uh, and in Oman. Of course, we are a big driver of those projects in Oman. And as I mentioned, the, the key driver of this is, of course, the, the DRI-EF manufacturing facilities available and, of course, and the transition to a hydrogen-based economy, which is driving most of these new projects. Uh, but uh, most of the new projects, new steel-making projects, I believe, is likely to be on flats, both in Saudi Arabia and Oman, based on what we have, what has been announced. Longs is likely to see more of a consolidation rather than new greenfield sites. Uh, okay, uh, this slide talks about the long product, key long product players in the GCC steel market. Uh, the reason why I have divided them into four different blocks is because I, we believe uh, each of them will behave differently. Uh, while they all play in the same market, the response to the market and their competitiveness is vastly different. Obviously, the key players, the integrated players in each of the countries, uh, including us, would be the, the key pillars of growth uh, in the industry. Uh, the second is the scrap-based electric arc furnace-based players who are on and off and who don't operate most of the time, clearly not well positioned from a cost competitive point of view. And we have, uh, in fact, a couple of them in the list has already been consolidated with uh, Sohar Steel being taken over by us and uh, Raji Steel and Hadid merging uh, recently. Uh, so we believe this slide could change as we go along uh, in the long product. And this is what the consolidation that I spoke about. And then you have re-rollers who are an active player in many markets, depending on imported billets. Uh, obviously, the price of billets is a big factor. Uh, and how the uh, price of billet is a big factor on how they price their product and how active they are in the market. Uh, so I put them in terms of competitiveness below the scrap-based players. And of course, the last is the induction-based players, uh, induction players, mostly in Saudi Arabia, uh, which, again, are very spot players depending on the scrap availability. Uh, and the pricing is also determined by the local scrap availability. So uh, this is one slide which will be interesting to watch over the period of years because I believe this will gradually change. And uh, clearly this is the consolidation that I spoke about. And I believe that uh, the stage is set now for uh, going forward for the consolidation in the long product industry uh, in GCC. Uh, now coming to the second part of uh, my presentation, uh, clearly, as I mentioned, there is no conference today in steel, which is complete without not speaking about the green uh, and uh, renewable. Uh, so Oman is clearly one of the strongest players in the region uh, in terms of a drive towards a hydrogen-based economy. Oman also has currently one of the strongest solar radiation and wind resources among the top 10 countries in the world. This is what's driving the move towards the renewable energy. It also has vast inhabited lands along the sea coast, which is supporting the green energy projects. And of course, it's supported by the national mission of the country, 2040 vision uh, of setting up a green economy uh, in Oman. Um, so we, of course, are fully aligned with the 2040 vision uh, of Oman and would like to support and be a part of this growth. We have invested, we have announced investments of up to about $4 billion in new plants to partner in this growth story. Yeah, as I, as I mentioned, we currently export to right from Australia to Canada uh, from Oman. We are on the port. Uh, our new project that we have announced is also on the port. So uh, I think the geographical advantage uh, plays a significant role in being able to supply to the world. Just a quick look at uh, where we see Oman. Of course, Oman currently produces DRI. We, we are one of the producers of DRI. Uh, the crude steel capacity is 4.6, out of which currently around 3 million tons is what's operational. There is no flat roll capacity uh, in Oman, either in terms of hot rolled, cold rolled, coated, or any plates. So we see that could change in the future. Uh, long steel, of course, again, we are one of the major players. Uh, there is no wire rod capacity, however, in uh, Oman. 
and of course there is some small angle channel producers mainly dependent on imported billets so this uh, so the main drive uh, in terms of future investments for us is going to be clearly flats to fill the gap and hopefully wire rod uh, which we will be starting uh, so sometime next year so this yeah we are clearly well positioned we are currently uh, as mr dalbalar said we apart from the other uh, uh, EF based producers are one of the greenest plants in the world. We have a carbon emission uh, footprint today of 1.05, uh, whereas if you compare with the world average is about 1.8 tons of carbon per ton of steel. Uh, we hope with the changes that we make to go below one and closer to 0 0.7 in the coming years, uh, which is what I think European uh, CBAM is talking about uh, for allowing imports into the Europe maybe by 2026. So we also have currently several energy initiative, energy uh, management, uh, environmental management in, uh, in, uh, in, in the initiatives to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, one of the key among them being, uh, of course, carbon capture, which we will be having a pilot plant uh, in 2020, 2024. Okay, the thing this uh, yeah talks about uh, the various again uh, initiatives that we have uh, proposed to reduce the reduce our carbon footprint, and in summary, uh, where we would reach by twenty twenty seven is a nine million ton steel producer, uh, about three point five million tons of uh, long product, and about. Uh, five and a half million tons of flat products. Of course, the flat product is a greenfield site uh, in Dukum, and I not in Sohar. Uh, Sohar is going to be a 3.5 million ton, and we're going to be a fully integrated steel plant, and hopefully a carbon footprint, uh, product carbon footprint by 2028 of around 0 0.5. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Are there any questions from the floor? Yes, we have one question, please. Uh, regarding the key long product or uh, producer, I think the information, it is not correct. You totally ignore LTFAC. We are the second largest producer in the GCC. We have 1.5 uh, million DRI. Well, then we have a 3 million rebar and we have 2 million uh, melting shop. And this information, you have to correct it. Yeah, oh, no, I, I must have started, I should have started with a disclaimer, of course. Except for the information, it is not correct. No, uh, I, I, I agree with you. I should have started a disclaimer. My purpose was to differentiate the players, okay, not necessarily put all the names. Uh, no, if you ignore the biggest, largest, this that's uh, it is not right. So uh, I would presume you would you would come in the second block. You are you are still not an integrated producer. Um, How not uh, integrated? We are in the DRI. Okay. We are in the melting show. We are in the rolling. Uh, we are in the scrap. How okay. not integrated? Yeah, almost okay. we are bigger than uh, Jindal in the integration. Okay. We have the downstream uh, completely, and from wire mesh, base strand, and that one. Okay, good. So we would we we would uh, welcome your growth, and we'd like to see you grow. So. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, please. Please go. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sonal, for your presentation. I'm just curious to ask you about uh, the carbon footprint. I mean, you know, it's amazing that you are mentioning 1.05 a ton of CO2 per one ton of steel, uh, compared with the world average you mentioned, that is 1.8. Can you tell us more about that? Because it's in interesting, you know, because, I mean, I assume that you are having still the iron reduction process or stage which is producing yes. hell of co2 i mean yes. compared with the blast furnace it's better for sure yes. apparently because you're using natural gas yeah. but still to make this you know great achievement i just need to understand more about thank you yeah i think uh, well uh, the transition from 1.05 
to 0.5 is going to be a journey. It is not something that's going to be overnight. Uh, the, the first, okay, currently we are a natural gas DRI electric arc furnace based process. Uh, the first step in the process would be to convert part of the electricity to renewable energy, which is where we believe will come down from 1.05, uh, sorry, there are two steps. One is convert the part of the electricity to renewable energy, and second is the carbon capture, uh, which would enable us to come down from 1.05 to 0.7. Okay. Further beyond that would only be possible by use of hydrogen. Uh, use of hydrogen, 100% use of hydrogen, we believe would put us at around 300 kgs of carbon, uh, per ton of steel. Uh, that is 100% use of hydrogen in DRI. Uh, but that's probably some years away. Uh, so I think it will be 0 0.7, 0 0.5, and then 0 0.3. So. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, uh, maybe my question was, you know, not clear enough. Uh, I'm asking now for the time being, you mentioned that your current footprint is 1.05, while the average yes. is 1.8. So what I want to understand, what you guys have done in Jindal Shadid to go down from 1.8 to 1.05? Oh, uh, no. Uh, so, okay, 1.8 is the world average uh, of, of steel producers worldwide. Uh, now, of course, a large portion of that is blast furnace. Okay. If you, if you strip out the blast furnace per se, you would, it will be a 2.2. Uh, probably uh, the world average. Uh, if you strip out only the DRI electric, it's probably at 1.3 1. 1. or 1.4, uh, just the DRI electric arc furnace. Uh, but with a natural gas, of course, it makes it even better. So a natural gas DRI is around one for most of the, uh, Of course, the carbon capture and uh, renewable energy is going to bring it down further. Thank you, clear. Yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Kumar, then. Thank you. Thank you.